everyone, uh, Glenn Sanford here, founder of eXp Realty. And today um, I've got a chance to, to actually spend some time with Dylan Nonaka. He's an agent uh, in Hawaii, uh, in uh, Kauai Kona, um, and uh, really great producer, been building, uh, has been in the business for about uh, eight years or so. Uh, and uh, just super good guy. Uh, Dylan and I've had a chance to kind of connect uh, from time to time over the last uh, couple of years, just saw each other in Maui, I think, I think shareholders. Anyway, uh, a lot of good stuff uh, that you've been up to, but uh, Dylan, hey, w welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So yeah, so um, you, you were one of, I think you were one of the first agents to actually join EXP in Hawaii. Um, you know, that obviously doing, doing something, kind of going out of the uh, comfort zone, that type of thing. Uh, what was it that first attracted you to EXP and how's, how's it all been going? There, there was a small presence of EXP on Oahu and I'm over on the big island. And so there wasn't any EXP here um, when I first joined. So it was a little bit of a, a leap of faith, but the, the big thing was the culture. Um, the business model made sense to me, but the, the ability to collaborate and work with other people and have connections outside of our local market was something that was was very appealing to me, mainly because we live in a bubble here on the islands, even within each island, you know, there's not a lot of connection and collaboration with people outside of your market. And then, as you know, the traditional real estate kind of model is kind of every man for himself and dog eat dog, and you don't even have collaboration within the offices. And when I was doing my due diligence via YouTube on, on EXP. I just saw the, the culture that the people that were already with the company what was sharing. And it just seemed like something that I wished I had in real estate. And so it was definitely worth the risk and taking a leap to see if I could make that work. Now you, you, you built uh, you know, you sold, sell a lot of homes there. How, what's the population uh, there? In, and now you're, on the Big Island, uh, and it, how do you pronounce it? Kalia, Kalui, Kalua, uh, Kalua. Ka Ka Kailua Kona is the the main city on the west side of the island. Yeah. Okay. How how big is that? Uh, how big is the city? The the city is about fifty sixty thousand. There, there's about a uh, between one hundred and eighty and two hundred thousand people on the island. So it's not a huge population. You know, most of the population there's a million people on Oahu. And that's where most of the population is. There's about 1.4 in the whole state. So on the Big Island, there's in the normal years, there's about 5,000 transactions a year. We do a lot of small land sales. So even though people think of Hawaii as being a really high dollar market, there are a lot of uh, transactions that are like sub 100,000 because we have a lot of rural land. So we do a lot of transactions. Some of it is 4 million and some of it is 50,000. So it's we do the whole gamut across the board. Now, and, and now you have like, I think. Do you have like active volcanoes on on your island? <laughs> we do. Yes, we absolutely do. That's a unique aspect of buying on the Big Island is evaluating your lava zone and knowing what the lava hazard risk is in your area. And so, obviously, that affects real estate prices. So, the closer you are to the active volcano, prices are lower and more affordable. And you can even buy a home um, right next to. At, previous lava flows we had in 2018 we had a lava flow come up right in the middle of Leilani Estates which is a neighborhood on the east side of the island so yeah it's definitely an aspect that we help people we educate people out and help them evaluate when they're looking for homes here on the big island so I'm guessing it's hard to get like volcano insurance you, you cannot get volcano insurance but you can get all other perils insurance and so that pretty much covers anything that happens that's a disaster to your home and in most cases in the past, the way the insurance companies handle homes that are lost by lava is through fire insurance. Because in most cases, the lava here is not That's like fire. a crazy explosion. And you know, it's not, it's not really dramatic. It's really a slow molasses like process when it flows. And so in most cases, the homes that were taken in 2018, the lava flow comes up to the house and then sets the house on fire before the lava actually takes the property. So if you can prove that, a lot of times you can just be there taking pictures of it. You know, you, you can see it happen. It happens very slowly. So normally fire insurance covers your house in that case. Okay. And, and the, is the fire department out there trying to put the fire out or are they just sort of, Oh no, just go? it's, it's, it's going to happen. There's no stopping mother nature. So, <laughs> okay. okay. We lost, we lost about 350 homes in 2018 during that flow. It was in a really nice area. Um, 
beautiful warm ponds that were heated by the volcanic activity underneath. It's called, it was called Vacation Land Capo, and it was a really tragedy, um, you know, very beautiful part of the island that is now no longer there. Right. So basically, if you move there, you got to know that's a potential. And so you can't, uh, can't say, well, the, I didn't know. The, that area was lava zone one. So there's nine different zones. And so the closer you are to one, the more the hazard is. So the geologists did a pretty good job of predicting where that, that uh, potential flow is going to be. And just for historical background, you think, why in the world would you be there? Back in the 50s and 60s, local savvy local business people um, bought this cheap land up, subdivided it, and then advertised it to people in the mainland for you know a thousand bucks an acre. And people from the mainland bought, not knowing you know obviously back then a lot less disclosure laws and other things available information on the internet. So um, there, there's a lot of property that was bought and built on in these high hazard zones that. The, the lava flow may, may only happen once every 50 years. So you may be okay for 40 years, but then it's, you know, that 41st year when it flows, it's a problem. So that's the his history of why there's even any homes there in the first place. Right. So what would an acre of land in a zone one area go for? Oh, uh, 10,000 bucks. You can, you can get lots, you know, small residential lots for 5,000 bucks. They're, they're very cheap. <laughs> very cheap. Okay. Okay. So build a, build like a fort that you're not worried about. Uh, yes. Getting taken out. So, um, obviously a very unique place to be selling real estate. You, you Were you born in Hawaii? Uh, I know you've lived some other places too, right? I, I was born and raised here. I did some time in the military away from the island, but um, I'm a second generation realtor also. My mom was a broker prior to me. She's retired now and my stepdad was a broker for like 40 years. So I was I was very fortunate to have very good mentors and guidance when I was learning the business. And so I, I, I didn't grow up around it. My mom kind of got into it when I was in high school. So I didn't benefit from from her success in real estate growing up, but uh, I got to learn from her when I when I got into the business. Okay, awesome. Now you you I think you have the uh, the distinction uh, of being the number one team in Hawaii according to Real Trends. Um, what uh, what have you attributed to your your success to um, in in the business? Exp. <laughs> That's been a big piece. That's oh, definitely well. been, and I can kind of walk walk through that. Um, I came to EXP in, in the end of 2018, 2019 was my first full year. I came in December of 18 with myself, my brother, and a couple of friends from another brokerage and had no intent of doing what we've done. I mean, we just kind of wanted to come here and enjoy the, the, the business model that was more beneficial than anywhere else and, and have that collaboration that we were looking for. And that just grew upon itself. I mean, we just tried to embody everything that EXP was. And I tried to reflect the stuff that I was getting from the people in my organization and others that I had reached out to that were always there to help and collaborate. And that just kind of grew upon itself at the end of year one, we had nine agents the year, in the year two, we had 25 at the end of year three, we had 50. And at the end of year four, we were almost at a hundred and now we're, we're well over a hundred agents. And this is just on our sales team. And there's a lot of things that we do, I think, well in the business, but the platform, if we didn't have the operating system of EXP behind us, I mean, there's no way that we would have seen that kind of expansion that quickly um, and done it as efficiently as we, as we have, because there's very little restrictions in terms of, you know, additional costs or restrictions on regions or, you know, franchise agreements. And, and you know, I see friends, my friends in the business who can't do business on another island because a different franchise owns that um, region. And, you know, we don't face that. We expanded to Maui earlier this year and have agents there. We're expanding to Oahu. So our team has, you know, the, the ability to to grow and expand is really unlimited and it doesn't exist in, in the kind of old fashioned business model. Okay. Awesome. So a uh, hundred, hundred plus agents. Um, uh, how many of those uh, hundred plus are uh, on the big Island with you? About 80 of them. So the vast majority. Okay. And then, and, and recognizing there's, you know, uh, only about 200,000 people live on whole Island. Um, you guys are probably crushing it as a, just as a brand, just from, a, from a industry perspective, I mean, do people see your signs everywhere? They, they, they do. It's still funny because I still get the, you know, what company are you with? And I tell them EXP and they said, never heard of it. And I said, well, we're the only, only the number one brokerage on the Island. <laughs> so <laughs> we've, uh, we, we as a sales team, so not even as a brokerage, there's probably an, an additional 50 agents or so on the island that are in EXP, but not on our sales team. But if you just compare the sales numbers of our team, we have outsold in terms of units every every other brokerage on the island. So we're not we're not there with volume yet because you have um, 
some of the you know the, the high end um, companies that just focus on more luxury. But from a units individual unit standpoint, we're the the most productive um, group of agents on the island. So that's something I'm. I just can't believe, but I'm super proud of that. You know, brands that have been here for 50 years um, just are completely falling by the wayside. And if you look at just the first part of this year, the market's down about 37% in terms of activity, number of units that are selling, and we and and we're up like 20%. So we're outperforming the market by like 60% in terms of you know comparatively. And if you look at the other brokerages on the island, they're all down between 30 and 60%. Some of them are down 60% in terms of their production versus 2022. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been a wild ride, but again, I attribute that to just the ability to support our agents and do things in a new and innovative way very efficiently. And um, we, we were continuing, actually, we're, I'm seeing momentum pick up. The first quarter of the year was good. And the second quarter, I was just looking at numbers is, is getting better um, as compared to last year. And nobody else is experiencing that. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I talked to a lot of people that yeah, nobody else is experiencing that <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so, so, um, you, you know, they're, you know, you're probably, I don't know in that market, but I would suspect you're at least 10 or 15% of the overall marketplace. Um, and, uh, uh, that, that's what so, I, that's what we're on track to do. If if, the, if there's around five thousand transactions, we're actually going to exceed ten percent. We're we're at three hundred transactions for the first six months of the year. So we did five hundred and twenty last year. So we're on track to do closer to six hundred this year, if not more, if the, the year continues to be strong, which would which would exceed ten percent of the market. Okay, yeah. So I was just doing some basic math based on number of houses, etc. But. Um, how do you, I mean, that's a lot of properties. What's your lead gen strategy? I mean, how are you generating all this, this business? Uh, I assume that you're uh, the rainmaker on a lot of the business coming into the team. I started the team mainly because of an excess of leads. And that's something I tell people that, you know, want to get into team, a team leader type position is if, if you don't have leads to support your agents, it becomes difficult to retain them. And we have a very, very high retention rate. And so I, I focus mainly on generating leads and we do that in a lot of different ways. And we are primary internet, internet lead generators. So we do Facebook, Instagram, Google pay-per-click. Um, we're, we're Zillow Flex Partners, which is a huge benefit and um, kind of a monopoly here on the island because we're the only ones that, that, that have that partnership. So that generates a lot of leads for us. But we just focus a lot of time and energy on being good at converting those leads and having the systems and follow-up processes to actually convert them in the long run. Because as you know, I mean, you're an expert in this, internet lead conversion is very low initially, but if you have good systems over time, you can increase the amount of your conversion two, three, four, five years in. I was just having dinner with a client that took me 720 days to convert them the first time, but in 24 months since the first time they run, they're on their sixth transaction. And so if I didn't keep them in the pipeline for that first 720 days, we wouldn't have had those additional six transactions after they closed on their first one. So that's just our culture and our mindset is that we we follow up, we provide value. Um, most people are relocating. So we do a lot of messaging on, I would ar I arguably have the, the, the best YouTube channel in Hawaii for learning about Hawaii real estate. I mean, we don't do fancy videos and like property tours and stuff, but we'll do informational about lava zones, things like that. So people will find us online and already have a relationship with us because if they're doing thoughtful research online and on YouTube, um, we're, we're probably the best source for that. So it makes building those relationships and getting credibility with leads very easy. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's all, it's all internet based relocation marketing in most cases. Okay. Uh, is there, by the way, when a uh, consumer or, or even agent searches online uh, through the MLS, is there a, um, a lava zone search criteria there is not because the idx feeds don't um you know don't feed that to most of the the portals out there but that's one of the things that we can create a value add for is if you want to evaluate your property based on those types of things you need to reach out to us and we can we can we have um a mapping system in the mls that you can do it it's just not public facing okay uh interesting okay very cool and so um you've got YouTube channel, you're you're generating a, a bunch of leads online, Zillow Flex accounts. Um, how do you keep track of all the leads? Uh, KV Core, another humongous benefit to EXP is having KV Core provided to us and every agent 
gets a, gets an account. We do have the add-on team account, so we can do lead routing and some additional management inside of it. But we're completely KV Core Power users. I have an agent on my team that is just a total wizard. She's got a PhD in KV Core, and you know helps us build those those follow-up programs and the drip campaigns, and helps manage that and monitor that system. So yeah, everything is managed inside of KV Core. It works great for us. Um, and then the, the the AI part of it that ends up doing the automatic reach out and stuff is huge too. So if we do miss anything, it's almost like the system backs us up and catches it if we don't have a drip campaign or a property alert set up. And um, yeah, I get, I'm a huge fan. Okay. So when people say they, they, they complain that KV Core, they, they came from another CRM, it's, it's not that KV Core is deficient, it's just they haven't figured out how to use it. That's pretty much it. I think all CRMs for the most part do relatively the same thing. It's just a matter of how much you want to dig into it and actually learn how to use it. And the, the old joke is, right, the best CRM is the one that you use. And I'm, I'm sure we could use another CRM at a high level also, but I don't see any value in paying a bunch of money every month to pay for an additional piece of software that's already provided to us. Right, because that would be a bunch of uh, a bunch of your marketing spend that you could use in other areas. So Absolutely. Make, make, makes sense. So, um, you know, the... Um, um, so for an agent, you know, maybe, um, who wants to be successful, obviously you've done this fairly short period of time. I think you've been in real estate eight years. You're now running, um, you know, one, well, one of the top team in Hawaii, but also, um, uh, you know, one of the top teams in the country. Uh, what's, uh, what's some advice that you would give to an agent who wants to be successful? You have to work on your business as much or more than you work in your business. And that was something I focused on early on, even as just a young, a, a young agent is I wanted to be efficient and I wanted to do things as quickly and easily as possible. I always say I'm a lazy person. I don't want to ever do anything twice. So if I can create a system or a template for something, I'll do it. And I did that just for my personal business early on, having reference documents and templates and things that I could cut and paste and use. And We've just turned that into and scaled it up to a system where now 100 agents can use it just as efficiently as I could. And that was something that fueled the growth in the beginning. And we've continued to build on and focus on what do we need? To, one of the things that I, that I love that I'm most proud of is if we have last year, we had seven agents brand new, out, you know, out the gate, newly licensed that did more than 10 transactions their first year. And that's highly attributed to the systems and processes and leads that we can provide them. And so I'm a big believer that you don't have to. Uh, buy into the mantra of like eight out of 10 real estate agents will fail in the first two years. That's kind of the industry standard. I think if we can provide them the right support, the only thing I can't provide them is work ethic. If you if you have the work ethic and the drive and the hustle, we can give you everything else to be successful. And, and we're seeing that at a high level um, on the team. So I don't turn new agents away. I actually like them better than experienced agents because they come with no preconceived notions and no bad habits and will buy into the system wholeheartedly. And we have lots of proof of concept that it works. So um, and we and we start that process early on with a new agent is, hey, the first thing you got to do is you have to set up your systems. You got to have your drip campaign set up. You got to have a process for follow up. We're not going to tell you exactly how to do it because it's different for everybody. But if you're there's no point in giving someone leads if they don't have a follow up system. That's a foundational, basic aspect of real estate where people have no process to follow up and they say the leads suck and they don't like them. And it's like, well, if you call them once or twice and never follow up again, they're not going to convert. And so. Um, that's just the culture and the process of the team is is having systems and working working on our business as much as we work in our business. So, so the uh, the phrase uh, "work on your business, not in your business," a phrase that I heard uh, from uh, probably the first time was Michael Gerber um, in, in the E Myth Revisited. Did you ever read that book? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, and then the uh, the other one, uh, um, the lead suck or, or don't suck, you suck. That came from Glenn Gary Glenn Roth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and another aspect to that from a, on the business, in the business standpoint is, is we do a lot of uh, conversation training. I mean, people call it scripts, but I didn't realize till recently that a lot of people have never kind of been in sales. If you've never been in sales, you don't know how to have a conversation with people. So we put a big emphasis the last year or so on training new agents on what questions to ask, how to build relationships, how to how to listen more and talk less what are the right what are the right things to to spark the right conversation to find out about somebody's motivation and so that's really helped too is investing early on in an agent's ability to have a have a quality conversation with a cold online lead 
and then quickly turn them into a friend and client. And then that, that increases our conversion considerably. Oh, very cool. Well, Dylan, man, this has been uh, this has been amazing uh, conversation, um, and and congratulations again on your success. Very quick, sort of rise to the top in the business. Obviously, you had some uh, uh, what your third generation realtor is that right? Uh, second, my mom was. Your mom yeah. was okay. Uh, that probably helped a little bit. So you already had the lingo down, um, and and knew you know probably the work ethic that was necessary to be successful. So that that all, all helps. But uh, again, congratulations on your success. Congratulations on being a three time Icon Award uh, winner with EXP. And obviously, I'm sure if you haven't earned this year's award yet, I'm sure that's in the bag pretty quick here. And, uh, but thanks for, for jumping on. How, how should somebody follow you if they want to maybe watch your YouTube channel or get some inspiration there? I'm, I'm uh, the only Dylan Onaka on the internet. So easy, if you just search my name, you'll find all my stuff, but I'm Kona Broker on Instagram and that's where I spend most of my time posting content. So there's, there's lots of content about real estate, but also just mindset and business and uh, just trying to add value to the world every way I can. And, and that, you know, that definitely comes back in business results. Awesome. Well, well, great stuff. And uh, I'm uh, sure we're already following each other, but I'm going to go check out your Instagram feed here momentarily. So thanks, everyone, for, for, for listening in. And uh, thanks again, Dylan. Thanks for having me.